so guys we're gonna go look through this field here um, the fun thing to me about being an agronomist is being able to look at the different insects and bugs that we have in the field that really make up this whole system that we're going to be looking at uh, so we're going to take a look and see if we can find i think we're going to be able to find some aphids some chinch bugs and really be able to look at what's eating on these plants and then what's eating the other bugs so let's take a look These are the base building blocks of this food chain that we have here in the sorghum field. These aphids can explode in population. They will get up to hundreds and if not thousands of them on each leaf. And they can just really be a problem on our crops, our sorghum crops. So this lacewing right here that we see, the little green insect, is one of the most important beneficials that we have. Much like the lady ladybug it is really responsible for eating a lot of the different aphids and other pest insects that we have in the plant it right now is in the adult stage of its life so it's going to be laying eggs all around in that small little dot right there we can see is actually a lacewing egg It's really important that when we choose to use a pesticide that we manage how it affects these other insects. And as a producer, as a farmer, and as an agronomist, it's our job to maintain these resources so that we can produce the most with the least amount of input. This ladybug right here is, is one of the most important beneficial insects in sorghum. It's responsible for keeping our aphids in check not only as the adult that we see here and that you're so used to playing with we can also see that they're larva which is their young so this tiny thing will grow quickly to be about a maybe half an inch in length it he looks like an alligator and it is ferocious it'll eat hundreds of aphids every day to continue to grow until it can turn into an actual ladybug Hey guys, uh, we're out here again um, looking for some different bugs that we're, uh, we're seeing in the field. We've looked at, yesterday we looked at some aphids, some ladybugs, and the different larvae that are going to be eating on those aphids. But right now, I want to see if we can find what we call sweat bees. We can see a sweat bee beginning to work on these flowers. You can see them right there. Sweat that bees they're kind of annoying when you go into the field they'll swarm you they're looking for water and sweet substances if you're sweating they'll try and uh, lick the sweat off of you but what's really cool is they are numerous they're very beneficial for the field and they're one of those species those beneficial species for pollination the pollinators that we're working so hard in agriculture to to preserve and to allow them to increase in population Today, just traveled down the road. We're now here in Enid, Oklahoma, where we're gonna be taking a look at some different insects and some different things that are going on in the field while we're still getting ready for our field day. We got a lot of exciting things to look at. 
one of the most exciting things for me is this orb weaver. It's a spider that we find in a lot of agriculture fields that's a really good beneficial for us. It puts up some beautiful webs, particularly in the, in the middle of the night. And then in the morning, we have some really uh, awesome uh, webs to, to find. But unfortunately, when you're walking through the field, if you're not a big fan of spiders, it's going to be one of those things that jumps out at you and uh, kind of creeps you out. But to me, it's just an awesome thing to find in the field. So as we continue our journey through the field, trying to find as many insects as we can, we have to remember that we found some aphids. We found some ladybugs and some lacewings, and that forms a nice ecosystem of control. Beneficial insects that are eating the aphids and the aphids that we're trying to control on the plant. We also have things in the field like grasshoppers and spiders and, and other uh, different stink bugs and beetles. And when things get out of balance, that's when we have issues. That's why it's important when we're looking at pesticide programs that we remember to maintain that balance as much as we can. And we want to um, avoid broad spectrum pesticides whenever possible and use some softer chemistries which are going to be a little more targeted to exactly what we're looking for. We came back here to our forage sorghum and the reason we did that is forage sorghum is right now the only thing that's blooming in the field. So that flower right there is starting to bloom, come out of what we call the boot and bloom. The problem with late blooming sorghum is that when it is going on, uh, that whenever that bloom is really late in the season, you run the risk of having sorghum midge. Guys, we just really lucked out. We are looking at a sorghum midge. Be one of our biggest pests in the sorghum field. And because this is one of the last things to flower out, it's gonna be the most vulnerable to sorghum midge because they're gonna attack whenever it is flowering. And that's why we want everything to be flowered before it's too late in the season because these insects will become much higher in population, become much more of an issue as the season goes on. So we've looked at some sugar cane aphids and in Larned, and one of the things that we ran into when we came to Enid, Oklahoma, is that we had had a just explosion of numbers. We went from very small amounts that we found in Larned to the numbers that were just tremendously impacting the crop. You can see that dark sooty mold is what it's called. That dark black substance on the surface of the leaf. It's the aftermath of that sugarcane aphid feeding in the sorghum. So that numbers just build up, build up, and that, that layer just forms. Then you get molds and other uh, secondary infections. Like think about uh, like a sticky syrup. As it goes through that combine, as it goes through the tractor, it'll just gum up everything and then it will just grind it to a halt. And all right, so we're jumping in the truck. We are headed home. Y'all have some safe travels. We're gonna get down the road and we will be back looking at some really cool agricultural practices throughout the country in the coming weeks. Stay tuned, like, and subscribe. This is Traveling Agronomist signing off.